Hey guys, this is James for In Between Us Ode number 9. So as you can tell, today we are not even brewing tea. We're doing something a little bit different. Um, we are going to talk about uh, Yixing and clay teapots in general. Um, so a lot, a lot of people have been requesting this for um, pretty much the extent of TDB. And I've been really hesitant to tackle this topic. Uh, number one, because Denny... Uh, it's not super into Yixing. He has one sort of cheap modern pot that is uh, that he uses for ripe pour, and that's literally it. So I am the one that unfortunately has gotten into Yixing. Um and the second reason being, I, we are uh, I don't claim to be an expert in tea, and I definitely do not claim to be an expert in anything teapot related. So please, please, please take all of this as um, for what it is and don't take us to be a tea master or whatever that means or anything like that where we are uh, the people telling you exactly what to do and what to think. In fact, that's really counter uh, the opposite mission of TDB in a lot of ways. So before, um, so really the two resources you should check out if you are seriously interested in Yixing are Marshallin's blog, and Marshallin, uh, most of you I'm sure know him that are interested in Yixing, but he talks a lot. And the good thing about Marshallin's blog is uh, he talks really um, to try to inform the drinker. So he talks a lot from the tea drinker's perspective. He doesn't really talk about tea as much like as a uh, like organic or not or like a really industry insider view, but he talks... Um, for the drinker and so I think there's a lot of valuable stuff you can find on Marshall and, and in fact I've learned probably most of what I know about Yixing from Marshall and, and the second one is uh, Bill Moody who sounds like a character from Harry Potter or is it Billy Mood? I'm not sure well he has written a very long in-depth series I think it's three-part series on Yixing and stuff like that and this is more for like if you're interested in like the specific types of clay, if you are um, interested in the history of Yixing. And so these things aren't as interesting to me, but I'm aware that a lot of people are uh, attracted to those sorts of things. So uh, definitely check out that resource. Um, it's been around for quite some time, um, and so a lot of people have learned a lot of good stuff from that, that guy. And so once you have read those things, hit that pause button, Come back in three hours, and then you can watch this episode. But a lot of what you're going to hear in this episode has been uh, is kind of like reiterated from uh, especially Marshall in, but those two resources. All right, so why should you buy Yixing? Um, you know, there's a lot of marketing and a lot of stuff like that, not only for Yixing, but for Jin Shui teapots. And these teapots are not cheap at all. And I think a lot of people... Uh, are kind of fascinated by the story of Yixing being seasoned and then building up over time and stuff like that. And you know, uh, the clay does season, um, but if you're looking for like a little magic wand to just like make your, your pot of tea that much better in any sort of cost-efficient manner, then Yixing is not the way to go at all. You should just be buying better tea. The current Yixing market is not cheap. It's done, uh, I mean... Uh, if you're looking at pots from like the 80s or 90s, these are, uh, there's a antique, it's a collectible, so they're, um, it's, it's just not the right way to go about making your tea better in any sort of cost effective manner. So if that's what you're interested in, pause the video, close the tab, hit control W, and just never bother with Yixing again. Use a guy wand and you will do totally fine. There's absolutely no... It's absolutely 100% unnecessary to go into Yixing if you are just interested in making a sweet cup of tea. Um, but if you are still watching at this point, uh, I am going to actually start talking about some Yixing. So um, the first thing um, that a lot of people um, is uh, modern versus not. So clay is a finite resource, so over time the clay that is being used for teapots has slowly gotten, um, well, basically watered down over time. And so you always hear these stories about people uh, that have been hoarding the clay and have made a modern teapot and stuff like that. Um, but in general, 
I wouldn't buy too much into that unless you really, really, really do trust the source you're getting it from um, because in a lot of ways it's just a way to charge a lot of money for a very average teapot. And so um, in general, if we're looking at it, so you, the clay as stuff gets more close to being modern, um, it's going to, like this is a modern teapot. I got this from Wisdom China. And so this one in particular um, has a really nice pour, it's a quick pour. It also has, um, I think, a six hole filter there. And so it's very clean and stuff like that. Um, but the clay isn't as good as something older. So for instance, this is uh, supposedly a 1980s teapot and it has really, really nice clay. Um, but you can see that as you get a little bit older, the technology wasn't as good. So while the clay might be better, the pour, the lid fit, and stuff like that are not going to be 100% perfect. And so if you wanted to buy something from the 70s or 80s that had perfect lid fit, perfect pour, and stuff like that, you're going to really have to ante up in price. So what's usually going to end up happening is you're going to end up settling for something sort of like this, um, where the lid fit is looser, the pour is not perfect, it's going to drip, it's going to leak a little bit, um, but the clay is going to be really, really nice. And so I found that myself, as someone that's gotten into Yixing, uh I really um, kind of lean more towards the older stuff, um, just because I really, really like the clay. Um, and... Uh, and stuff like pour and stuff like that can be really mitigated by pouring downwards, pouring straight into the cha high, and so it drips a little bit, but it, it'll hopefully mainly drip into your cha high or cup anyways. Um, and so uh, one of the other common things that people will ask about is price, and will this Yixing clay pot, is it like contaminated with lots of chemicals or hazardous things that are going to kill you? So for the most part, not. You have to keep in mind that Yixing, like tea, is a big, big marketer's world. So it's within a lot of people's self-interest that are selling Yixing to convince you that everything that's not theirs might hurt you or kill you. So there's a lot of fear-mongering going on. And so for the most part, uh, like a lot of these compounds are 100% safe. Now that's not true 100% of the time, obviously. But for the most part, you shouldn't worry too much um, about the clay actually, actually being harmful to your health. Um, and so for me, uh, I think probably the uh, a good starting range to look for for Yixing, if you're just looking at price, is probably around 50 or $60. And so I personally, after doing a lot of research, settled for um, a eBay vendor called Zen 8T. I'll put a link there. And so I bought a couple teapots from them. I've sold a couple to friends and stuff like that since then. Um, but they're solid teapots. They're not excellent. They tend to be a little bit larger. Um, but uh, that's a good starter place, um, as well as Wisdom China. And then, uh, yeah, so it, it, once you start to, I would say that the $70, $80 range will get you something modern that's a little bit nicer. But if you really want to get into that sort of 90s market um, or even uh, late 80s, 80s, you're going to probably just have to be ready to spend a couple hundred bucks on a teapot. And so my favorite vendor um, that I got a lot of teapots from when I was starting out was Origin Tea. And um, unfortunately, they have since closed shop, but and you can't really find too many things similar to that sort of quality and size on the market, but um, that's something uh, you can you can find stuff like this from Life in a Teacup for ninety five bucks, and I think this is probably one of the better deals on the market. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I think on the next episode I'm going to go into more on the maintenance of Yixing as well as a couple more concepts. There's a couple of these teapots here which I want to talk about that I don't actually use, and I'm going to talk a little bit about why. Um, so thank you guys for watching in between episode number nine. I hope you guys found it informative. Uh, so please hit that subscribe button, as well as let me know what you liked, didn't like, any feedback on this episode. It's kind of a one-of-a-kind episode so far. Um, so uh, thank you guys for watching, and Merry Christmas. All right. I kind of got on my side.